you if you would go ahead and stand to grab your songbooks, page 114. Page 114, talent to Jesus. Sing with me on that first verse this evening, if you would. Are you weary or heavy hearted? Tell it to Jesus. It to Jesus. Are you grieving or rejoiced in heart? Tell it to Jesus alone. Tell it to Jesus. Tell it to Jesus. He is a friend that's well known. You know other such friend or brother. Tell it to Jesus alone. On that last verse. Are you troubled at the thought of dying? Tell it to Jesus, tell it to Jesus. Christ coming, kingdom are you sighing? Tell it to Jesus alone. Tell it to Jesus, tell it to Jesus. He is a friend that's well known. You've no other such friend or brother. Tell it to Jesus alone. Why worry when you can pray? Trust Jesus, he'll be your stay. Don't be a doubting Thomas, rest fully on his promise. Why worry, worry, worry? verse of that this evening. God answers prayer. God answers prayer in the morning. God answers prayer at noon. God answers prayer in the hope you believe that tonight. The, um, several months ago, the Lord laid on my heart to do something a little different through the summer, and so each Wednesday night during the summer is going to be a little different focus. Tonight, we're calling a prayer service. You know, the Bible does say that my house should be called a house of prayer, and we love singing, and we love preaching, and all the activities, but uh, prayer ought not to be a strange noise in the house of God. Amen. And so we're going to focus, we're going to focus our energy, our thinking tonight. If you're visiting with us, we're glad you're here. And I noticed some folks visiting around. And Brother Dan, real quick, introduce your brother tonight with us, if you would, sir. Boy, isn't that good? Rocky Mountain Baptist Church. I like that. And Brother Rogers, most of you don't know this. A lot of you, might. he served here. I don't know, Brother Gordon. Uh, Brother Rogers, how many years ago were you here? 1995 and 96, and uh, we worked together, and just a great man, and really appreciate the, the, the best one of the Rogers family right here, okay, so uh, we do love him and his family, and tremendous family, and good to have him visiting, and uh, in a little while, we'll really kind of tell you why he's here, and uh, so it's a blessing to be here tonight. We're going to focus on prayer, and it is uh, a very important thing. Did you get a little prayer handout? We're going to use that a little later on, so keep that. Um, now listen, I need all of the children, all the kids look at me for a minute, all the teenagers, look at me. Prayer is not boring. Amen. Now, I remember when I was this age and I grew up in church, I, was, I came to church nine months before I came up on this earth, okay? Uh, two, three days after I was born, I was sitting in the choir singing with my mom, all right? But, uh, and I remember, you know, kind of zoning out or kind of getting under the pew if I was a little boy and all the prayer was going on, like what's all that? But prayer is not boring, all right? Teenagers, hey, hey, how about adults? Adults, prayer is not boring, amen? 
It's a very important thing. And I know we're on even live stream, live stream. Some of our seniors that can't get here, you pull up a chair, get your Bible. We're going to pray tonight and ask for God's blessing upon this service tonight. So we're going to do things just a little different. So if you'll bear with me, we're going to have a prayer service tonight, all right? I'm going to ask you to go ahead and be seated tonight. And uh, Vanessa, good to see your folks visiting with us from the state of Washington, I believe. And glad they're with us tonight. If you'll take your Bibles, if you would, and go to 2 Chronicles. 2 Chronicles in the Word of God. All the kids, if you will, if you can tell me what I'm going to speak about and how we're going to do this and some questions I'll ask you, if you want to come by my office, I have an incredible gift to give you tonight. Part of my birthday gift, all right? My outrageous birthday cake, all right? You can have some of that, all right? And uh, then uh, other folks are coming in. We'll give them just a minute to get in. And I see another friend of mine, Brother Oliver Areza, uh, evangelist passing through. All these preachers, man, when preachers are here, that's a scary thing. Amen. And Brother Oliver, good to see you. Brother Dan's Brother Gordon, Brother Gordon Rogers, pastor, is here tonight too. And any other preachers here tonight? I'm glad you're here. Amen. Brother Oliver, I was just explaining to our church, we're doing some things different tonight, is, is prayer service. Amen. Where we are coming together and we're really going to focus and spend all of our attention tonight on prayer. And if you're visiting, we're glad you're here. But this is just what God's laid on our hearts to do as a church. And so you just uh, go along with the journey with us tonight. We're going to look at just something the Lord shared with me that today as I was just praying about this in Second Chronicles. Take your Bible and go there. Now, kids, if you can, after the service, if you can uh, relate to me some of the questions, I'll talk. Uh, you could get a very great gift tonight. All right. So you hang in there and you pay attention. Second Chronicles chapter number 20. Asa was an amazing king. He was a good king. He passed off the scene, and his son was, anybody know? Jehoshaphat. I've always loved saying that name. I don't know why. Uh, Jehoshaphat. And uh, say that with me. Jehoshaphat. Isn't that good? Just rolls off your tongue. And Jehoshaphat, his son, they were good kings. You know, they were, the majority of the kings were evil, had done wicked in the sight of the Lord. And of course, the the top of the top, we like to say, of all those wicked kings was who? Ahab. Ahab and Jezebel, and you know the story there. Ahab had, uh, of course, the, the northern kingdom, and, uh, and uh, Jehoshaphat was uh, leader over uh, Israel, the southern kingdom. And so the king, the northern king there, Ahab, he was trying to influence Jehoshaphat. And so he got together and said, listen, I want you to come with me and help me fight some battles. And the Bible uses the word that Jehoshaphat made joined affinity. He joined up with Ahab, a good man, a good king. He joined up, and even good people have some bad moments sometimes, and all of us have been there. And so, but because of this, it's really interesting, he, he kind of went crazy. Ahab said, listen, I got this plan. We're going to go defeat this enemy over here. I'm going to go disguise so they won't know I'm a king. I want you to dress up as a king, put your crown on, have all your stuff, and we're going to go to battle. Now, I would have said, ain't no way, because they always tried to kill the king first, you know, the leader first. But Jehoshaphat wasn't thinking straight, and that's what he said. Well, he agreed to it and almost lost his life. And so all this is going on, and the preacher comes to him, the prophet of God, and tells Jehoshaphat, listen, because of your your affinity with Ahab and for the things you're leading the country into. He said, there's going to be some judgment. There's going to be armies. There's going to be battle. There's going to be war come against you. And that's where we pick up the story in 2 Chronicles chapter 20. Keep your Bible through our prayer service. All right, we're going to look at this. This is an amazing thing that the Lord showed me this afternoon. 2 Chronicles chapter 20. And look at verse number one with me tonight. All right. They're going to fight some Amorites and Moabites and Edomites and and they're going to come against Jehoshaphat. In verse 1, it came to pass after this also that the children of Moab and the children of Ammon and with the other besides the Ammonites came against Jehoshaphat to battle. And they, there came some that told Jehoshaphat, saying, There cometh a great multitude against thee from beyond the sea on the side of Syria. So all these people are coming, these uh, Amorites and Moabites and Edomites, they're coming against Jehoshaphat, against the nation of Israel. In verse number 3, and Jehoshaphat feared. And he set himself to seek the Lord and to proclaim a fast throughout all Judah. And Judah gathered themselves together to ask help of the Lord. Even out of all the cities of Judah, they came to seek the Lord. Now, I want you to take your pen tonight. In verse number three, I want you to circle the word seek. They wanted to seek the Lord. In verse number four, I want you to underline the word seek. 
And you can circle or circle the word seek and the word help. They, they came to the Lord. They sought the Lord. They asked help of the Lord. And it's interesting in verse number three, the Bible says, and Jehoshaphat feared. You know, so often that's how we get in our lives, the situations, the circumstances. If it's a financial fear, if it's a, some fear at home, it, so whatever it is, uh, Satan wants to bring fear into our life. Amen? And to, to, to defeat us that way, discourage us and get us down. It's a health scare. It's a fear with our children, whatever. There's some, that's the way it's going to be in our life. And, and just like that situation, Jehoshaphat feared this great army. These, they were outnumbered two to one. These three armies were coming against him. And so he, he went to seek the Lord. It's interesting. Look what he says. Circle this word also. And Jehoshaphat feared, and he set himself to seek the Lord. What does that mean? Number one, you can write it down somewhere. This is what we're going to talk about tonight. Number one, he set himself. Right before that, he talks about coming to the Lord and proclaiming a fast throughout the land. Number one, we must have our sins confessed. When we, as we come before the Lord on this prayer night, it's a very important... He set himself to seek the Lord. He said he got ready to seek God. He, they proclaimed this fast throughout the land, and people were getting ready to come to God and ask God's petition. And how we do that, number one, is we get our, uh, the iniquity, the sin, the things we've done wrong. Listen, what I like to say is this. Let's, let's take the house, let's get the broom out, and we'll get in all the corners and sweep it all clean. Amen? That's what we do before we come to the Lord. And so that's what we want to do tonight. We want to come and you know, before the Lord and ask His blessing. You know, the Bible says in Psalm 66, verse number 18, if I regard what? Iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear me. It says in 1 Peter chapter 3, verse number 7, that likewise ye husbands dwell with them according to knowledge, giving honor to the weak wife as a weaker vessel, as being heirs together of the grace of life that your prayers be not hindered. What he's talking about, if there's something going on at home with your marriage or with a relationship in our life, listen, before we come to the Lord, we got to get it right. Amen. Are you with me tonight? Amen. It says in Matthew, and I won't go through all these verses, verse 23, if you have a gift, you're going to bring your gift to the altar. You're going to bring your petition to the altar. You're going to bring something to the Lord. First, you got to go to someone. If you've, someone's wronged you or you've wronged them, you got to go and make it right. I like what it says. If someone's wronged you, you go to them. And you get it right. Then you bring your request. Then you bring your gift to the altar before the Lord. And so tonight, I want the Holy Spirit to ask your heart, is there anything in my life that's unconfessed sin? Is there some area? Maybe it's a corner. I don't even know. God, show me. Holy Spirit, i got to sweep out the, the dust in the corners of my life. And maybe in your thinking of someone right now, there's someone that's offended you. I, I, I'm sure with the church, even on a Wednesday night, great crowd, hey, there's probably some areas we could think of. The Lord laid on someone on my heart this afternoon that I had to go to this afternoon. N not that I feel that I had done, but someone I think that they thought that I had said something. And so I had to go and I had to text them. Hey, this is one time you can use your phone. They might not even be here. Maybe you can text them right now. You never thought the preacher would ever say that in church, did you? <laughs> but how, we, how are you going to get it right? L l l prayer, this is a serious matter. I want God to hear us. I, I want our nation to be spared. I want my family to have help. I want this church to grow. I want our missionaries to go. Listen, we need God to get a hold of it. We need God to help us. And so to do that, we've got to come clean and we've got to get ready to do that. Are, are you with me tonight? I want to do that tonight. We're going to take some time and just individually, this is by ourselves, we'll confess. I've asked Brother Smith to come and he's going to read just a portion of Scripture and then he's going to pray. And this is what I want you to do. Brother Don, you come. This is what I want you to do. As he's reading... As he's praying, I want you to be confessing whatever God's laid on your heart. You can keep your eyes open. You can close your eyes. You can kneel. You can stand. Whatever God lays on your heart, I want you to think of those things. Ask God to show you. Maybe, maybe you ought to get up on this side and go over to that side. There's someone up in the balcony you've got to get things right with. Listen, listen it, it's, not, it's not about a game. It's not a game. This church cannot go forward if people have wrongs against one another. There's so much that God wants to do with us, but it hinders the work of God and it calls a barrier and a wall. And Satan, that's his job. You know, his job is to accuse the brethren. He'll take two words from people talking over here and they don't even mean it. And he'll, he'll stir it all up. Before you know it, they're at odds with one another. And he just twisted it all up. He'll do that at home. He'll do that with, in school. He'll do that at work. And he'll just gossip and he'll start going. That's Satan's job. Maybe there's someone that's offended. It doesn't say if you've offended somebody. If someone's offended you, you go to them. And you get it right. That's hard to do. I, I doubt if anybody will move and go do that because that's hard to do. 
but we ought to. Maybe we ought to just at least take it to the Lord tonight. Brother Don, as you pray, he's going to read and then he's going to pray. I think we ought to bow our head and we ought to be in that attitude of prayer, asking God to help us tonight to clean our lives up. We're going to do that first tonight, Brother Smith. Psalms 51, verse 1. Have mercy upon me, O God, according to thy loving kindness, according unto the multitude of thy tender mercies, blot out my transgressions. Wash me thoroughly from mine, mine iniquity, and cleanse me from my sin. For I acknowledge my transgression, and my sin is ever before me. Against thee, thee alone, have I sinned, and done this evil in thy sight, that thou mightest be justified when thou speakest, and be clear when thou judgest. Behold, I was shapen in iniquity, and in my sin, uh, my mother, uh, in sin, did my mother conceive me. Behold, thou desirest truth in the inward parts, and in the hidden part, thou shalt make me know, uh, make me to know wisdom. Purge me with hyssop, and I and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. Make me to hear joy and gladness that the bones which thou hast broken may rejoice. Hide thy, fa hide thy face from my sins and blot out my iniquities. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me uh, not away from thy presence and take not thy Holy Spirit from me. Uh, verse 12 also. Verse 12, restore unto me the joy of thy salvation and uphold me with thy free spirit. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, what a wonderful thought, Lord, that because of Jesus yeah. and your grace and your mercy and your love towards us, Lord, that all of your wrath and all of your judgment and all of your a concern for us was placed on Jesus. Lord, we just thank you. Thank you, Jesus, for dying on the cross for us, for our sins, that we might be able to receive your grace. Thank you, God. Thank you, Father, for your love towards us. And Lord, through your grace and your mercy towards us, Lord, you have the best for us but Lord, sometimes our sin will block those blessings and sometimes those things will get in the way of, of your plan for us. And Lord, help us to confess our sins. Lord, help us to uh, keep that fellowship, uh, Lord, fresh every day with you. And Lord, I just thank you, Lord, that you've indwelled us with the Holy Spirit and Lord, that you've given us power and a sound mind and love. And Lord, I just thank you, Lord. But I, Lord, I just thank you, Lord, that uh, those verses in the Bible, that even after we've accepted Christ in our heart, Lord, that, that Lord, that we can confess our sins. And Lord, that you, uh, Lord, that you not only do you cleanse us, but Lord, that you, that Lord, you make us righteous. And it's all because of Jesus. It's all because of what Jesus did for us. And Lord, our nation and our and our in our land, Lord, we've we've turned our back against your grace and your love towards us. And Lord, we fail to see that, uh, Lord, that uh, we have that forgiveness. And Lord, I just I just pray, Lord, as a nation, Lord, that we can realize, Lord, that your blessings are there for us. And Lord, just waiting for us to receive them. And Lord, I just thank you, Lord, that, that uh, you've given this church a, a, a great spirit. And Lord, you've given us uh, great people, Lord. But just don't, let, don't, don't allow us to let our sins to get in the way of where we're supposed to be. And Lord, in our, the vision the pastor has for us, don't let our fears and our apprehensions and our uh, Lord, not able to trust you, Lord, where you want to take us, Lord. Help us to, to just trust you for everything. And Lord, we just thank you. Thank you for the blood. And we praise you, Lord, for our salvation. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen. Don't be afraid.
Go ahead and turn that one on there. Did it come back on? All right. Don't be afraid to, uh, don't be afraid of this time of prayer. Don't be afraid. To, you know, you come, I know it's, you're tired, you fight the traffic to get here, and it's like, what are we doing tonight? Don't, don't be afraid of prayer. It, it, you know, it, it, wow. Look, at, look what it says. We're back in this chapter here. Jehoshaphat, this king, he's leading their nation in prayer. He brings them to this place, and they've, they've had this uh, fast throughout all of Judah, Judah, verse 4, gathered themselves together to ask help of the Lord. Even out of all the cities of Judah, they came to seek the Lord. In verse 5, And Jehoshaphat stood in the congregation of Judah and Jerusalem in the house of the Lord before the new case. So they're in church. They're in the house of the Lord here. Verse 6, And he said, O Lord God of our fathers, are not thou God in heaven? He, he, he's establishing a relationship. First, they confess their sin. Now watch, he's establishing this relationship. He said, O Lord God of our fathers. How, how was the, I call it the Lord's Prayer or the model prayer. How does that start? Our Father, which art in heaven. You see, it's a relationship with God. I think sometimes the reason we struggle in prayer is because our relationship is not what it ought to be. It, it's so hard to pull us to pray because we don't have the relationship with the Father. Our Father, I love that little story about the man who was wanting to get some information to a president. He was so concerned about this need that he had in the Secret Service years ago could, was keeping him out. And back in the era, they didn't have pictures of people. Well, there was a little boy out there and he was playing and he overheard the man and he, the man was really upset. He almost weeping. I need to get to the president. And the Secret Service didn't let him. And the little boy finally came up to him and said, hey, mister, you want to see the president? Yeah, follow me. Went past the Secret Service, past the guards, right into the house, stepped right down in the room. It was the president's son. You see, it's the Father that gives us access. Is that we're sons and daughters with God. We can go straight to the Father. Amen? Our Father which art in heaven. And so he says in verse number 6, he said, O Lord God of, uh, of our fathers, art thou not God in heaven? And rulest thou not over all the kingdoms of the heathen? In thine hand there is not power and might, so there is none able to stand with thee. Art thou not our God, who dost drive out the inhabitants of the land before the people of Israel, and give us to the seed of Abraham thy friend forever, and thou dwelt therein, and have built thee a sanctuary therein, for thy name's sake? He's just talking, he's, he's actually exalting the Lord. So first tonight we're confessing our sins, I hope you've done that, we want to exalt the Lord. In that model prayer, our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. That's what prayer is. In this whole chapter, we're seeing what prayer is in like the formula or the outline for prayer. He's exalting the Lord. I think that's a wonderful thing. I'm going to ask real quick. Uh, uh, I'm going to pick out Brother Chris. I know he's way up top to come down. I'm having him pray a, a prayer of exaltation. But before they do that, we're going to sing a song of exaltation. We want to sing How Great Thou Art. 365, we're going to sing a verse of that. And let's all do that. Let's all exalt the Lord. That's part of uh, all the way through the book of Psalms, uh, praise and honor and extolling the King of Kings. And so let's take a moment and do that. Isn't he the great God that we serve? Let's do it together as we sing together. Brother Mike, help me out. God, a wonderful God. Don't we serve an awesome God tonight? 
and you ought to exalt Him. There's nothing wrong with that. I want you to pray that prayer in your heart. Can you do that? Is there, is there something in your inner strength? Listen to what prayer is. As someone leads in prayer, we to agree together. We agree on what that is. That's how a church comes. That's how we pray in one accord and how God answers prayer. Brother Chris is going to come. And just a prayer of exalt, exaltation to the Lord. And let's agree together and do that together tonight. Let's pray together. <clears throat> Father, you're so wonderful. Uh, Lord, how awesome you are, Lord. Doesn't even, we, we can't even compare it or comprehend it in our minds. Lord, you're so outside the box of our minds. Uh, Lord, you're creative. Lord, as I see your creation that you created with just your words in such a quick time. Lord, you see how uh, amazingly smart you are. Lord, how wise you are. Lord, it's, uh, it's humbling to be called your son. Uh, Lord, we pale in comparison to what you are and to what you want us to be, but you're so good to us. Father, you look out for us. You take care of us, even the needs that we don't even know we have. Lord, you protect us from things that we didn't even know were trying to harm us. Uh, Lord, you're such a great shield and such a great fortress and such a great barrier for us, Lord. When we're in trouble and we hurt, we can hide behind you. And Lord, we can hide under the shadow of your wing. Lord, we can come to you without condemnation. Lord, when we do wrong and we do it all the time, Lord, you don't, you're long-suffering to us and you love us and you're patient with us and you're kind to us, Lord. Lord, you're so much better to us than we would ever deserve. Lord, I just want to thank you for all that you've given us. Uh, Lord, the things that we take for granted, uh, Lord, you still continue to provide them. That's how good you are. Uh, Lord, the way you lead and guide us, even when we try to do our own thing, Lord. <clears throat> Lord, I want to thank you and praise you for uh, your wonderful plan of salvation. Lord, how imaginative, how, how incredible that plan was. And Lord, I <clears throat> love to see through the scriptures, Lord, how you weave it into every word, uh, the salvation that comes by Jesus Christ. And Lord, we love you tonight. We, we thank you so much for all you've given us, all you've done for us, Lord, for even desiring to have a relationship with us. Lord, you wanted that so bad that you gave up the thing that was the most precious to you. And Lord, you're an awesome God. Lord, we don't deserve to serve you, but we thank you that we have an opportunity to serve you. Lord, help us tonight to just to pour out our hearts to you. Lord, you know what's in there already. You just want us to talk to you like we'd talk to our best friend. And so, Lord, may we uh, show you tonight, Lord, uh, everything that's in our hearts, Lord, all the love and admiration that you deserve. Lord, we thank you for this church. I pray that you would continue to push us and take us to where you want us to be. Lord, thank you for being so good and such a wonderful God. It's in Jesus' name we come to you. Amen. 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 Not, not to be hard to do. It ought to be a natural for a Christian to do that. Amen. Amen. Hey, listen, t spend some time. You're going down the road and you're humming a, how great thou art. Man, praise the Lord and thank Him and exalt Him and, uh, and, and then go, go to the Lord in prayer. It's a great thing. And that's what He's showing us in this chapter. It's amazing. I was, I was reading it today. He confesses He's got this uh, going on with the... Uh, coming to the uh, clean with the Lord and they bring the whole nation together in this time of uh, uh, prayer and fasting and then they exalt the Lord through verse number 8, verse number 9 and we come down to verse number 12. Are you with me in Second Chronicles 20, verse 12? O our God, wilt thou not judge them? For we have no might against this great company that cometh against us. Neither know we what to do, but our eyes are upon thee. And all of Judah stood before the Lord with their little ones, their wives, and their children. You say, preacher, we're doing something like this, and the little kids are here. Hey, there's nothing wrong with that. Little kids need to hear their parents pray and need to be in a prayer service and see the touch of God and let God anoint someone, and they know what's going on. And, and they were in, in, all together as a family. In verse 14, then upon all these other, you'll see all those names there, <coughs> came the Spirit of the Lord in the midst of the congregation. Verse 15, and he said, Hearken ye all Judah and ye inhabitants of Jerusalem and thou King Jehoshaphat. Thus saith the Lord unto you, Be not afraid nor dismayed by reason of this great multitude for the battle is not yours, but it's God's. I want you to understand that tonight. See, this is, that's the problem. Verse number 12 said it this way, we, For we have no might against this great company that comes against us. Neither know we what to do. See, tonight... It, Prayer is understanding our helplessness, that we don't have the strength and the power. We don't have the might. We don't know what to do. We don't know exactly what to, how to answer. We can't fix it ourselves. We, our IQ is not high enough. We don't have enough contacts. We don't have enough money hidden away somewhere to solve it. I'm just saying we need to understand that we need God. Amen. The issue, the reason it's hard to really 
stir up prayer and to really spend time. Because prayers work. It's a ministry of prayer. And the reason that's so hard is because we got it under control. And sometimes God will get you into a spot. He'll get you through a situation where you're going to get down on your knees and down on your face because there's nowhere to look but up. I thank God that, that, and I don't use the word best or Brother Rogers, you'll understand what I'm talking about, but when, when I ha- have not the power and, and my studies have taken me places and I'm not really prepared to preach, but, but I give it to God and I go to God and God, I need your help and I, I can't do it without you. Those are the times when God uses you. It's when you, you, you need the Lord. and you, you see, the problem is we, 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 see, we see the verse, I can do all things, but you don't understand. It's through Christ that strengthens me. I can do all things. Say, say that with me. I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. Because here's the problem. Outside of Christ, you can do nothing. John 15, for without me, you can do nothing. You can do all things through Christ. We don't believe that. We, we got it. We do not believe John 15, 5. We can do nothing? Well, preacher, I just did some things today. Hey, listen, nothing of any value, nothing to bring glory to God. It's all selfishness. It's all wood, hay, and stubble. You can do that. But we can do nothing outside of Jesus Christ. I can do all things through Christ with strength. The Bible said this in, uh, I think it's James 4, God resists us to proud. He'll give grace to the humble. Yeah, I'm okay. And yeah, I'll pray. Oh, what are we doing? This little prayer meeting and all that. Listen, I need the Lord. This church needs God. I need your prayer for this preacher, for the family, for the needs that are going on tonight and we're going to talk about right now. Hey, listen, God wants to help us. He wants to be there, but he's not going to come to a proud people that shove him off and are so busy doing their own thing. He needs us to need him. And I thank God tonight that that's where we're at. We want to pray now. We want to bring our petitions before the Lord and we're going to do this kind of like we do on a normal Wednesday night where we're just going to, for a few minutes, we're almost done. The hour's early. We're going to break up in twos or threes or however you want to do it. We're going to kneel and pray in a minute. I want you to take that little list and look at our missionaries tonight. We promised to pray for our missionaries. You know that? We, we stood there and we said, yes, we'll pray for you. We took their prayer cards. Some we know, some we don't know very well. But you know what would be good? That we would lift up every name tonight, every missionary. That we would lift them up and, and God would help them and give them fruit for their labor and supply their need and whatever health. Sometimes we don't even know what they're going through. Hey, there would not be neat for a church to really, really pray for the missionaries. They, there's, a, there's special requests on here. Some of the ones we know about. Um, I know o, uh, Brother Dan Odessa went to be at the Lord yesterday. Uh, one day before her 89th birthday. I, mean, I don't know if you, Mrs. Martin, Odessa Martin... Um, Brother Van, that's your great-grandmother? That's your great-grandma. One of the sweetest ladies. A, a lady that never complained. She'd come to church. Uh, how many of you would get up on a Sunday morning uh, way early and, and, and order a cab? So that's the only way she could come to church. Get in a cab, come to church. After church, sit back here. Sometimes everybody would be home and she was waiting for her ride to come back and get her. And she just wait. And I'd go back and talk to her. Hey, I'll take you. You want something to eat? No, I'm fine. It's all ne- not one complaint. Never. Sweetest lady in all the world. Hey, she's rejoicing in heaven tonight. Amen? We'll pray for her family, though. That's a tough time. The funeral and the arrangements are coming up this week, so pray for them. And uh, Donita um, went through the cancer surgery. I got to see her last week, and she was encouraging me. I haven't spoke with her for a few days. Brother Rogers, do you know any more about Donita? And so continue to pray for her. Um, Brother Hood is just uh, languishing, and so pray for him and his last few hours and days. And uh, part of the reason that I know Dan's brother's here, and I'm, I'm assuming, I uh, haven't spoke with him, but it's for your brother, Bill. And uh, Brother Dan, if, could you give the church report on your brother? Would you be willing to do that? Amen. Amen. Bill Rogers. And I always like to say that it's not over till God says it's over. Amen. And he's in control of that. And 
And uh, so let's pray for him tonight. And uh, I gave you, uh, did we pass out those cards before we come in tonight? Ushers, would you help me collect those? If you have a card of a special need and you would like us, this is, now if you pass this in, uh, we're going to announce this publicly. So if you want to give them to me privately, that's fine. But ushers, if you'll collect them, just pass them to the end of the rows and let the ushers collect those. And we want to put those on our list tonight. It'll be a little quicker doing it that way. Then the church staff ministry and the pastor and then all the ministries and different ones. That's some of the ministries we have there. If you'll remember those tonight as we go to the Lord in prayer. And we're going to add some of these to them. If we can get some of those tonight. Um, <clears throat> Brother Kelby, do you have some of those there? You have some. Any others, fellas? Just bring them on down. Thank you. All right. Um, thank you, sir. All right. Let me just go through these quickly. A health needs tonight um, for this is wisdom teeth to be removed and for Jenna Jones uh, kids to be saved. I'm gonna. I'm just gonna read these and you write them down however you can. Okay. If you can write them down, these are ones that we're asking for tonight during our prayer night. Okay. So I'm just gonna take a moment and you do your best. Out, okay. This will be under health needs. Uh, uh, Jeremiah's wisdom teeth. Is that true? They were. Oh, my goodness. Is he under the weather then? All right. Are you feeding him? His, his teeth. He can't eat. Don't feed him for a while. All right. So, and for, uh, uh, for some of the kids there and then uh, special need work coming in. Very good. Uh, what? Special need tonight for, uh, is it Caroline Harbaugh? Oh, that's the one-year-old with cancer. Yes, so remember that little girl tonight, Caroline Harbaugh. And then for salvation, for um, Jeremiah, um, is that Areza? Is that how you say that? Erez? That's a cousin. And then Dustin, that's one of uh, Nathan's co-workers. So remember those two for salvation. And then some special needs, uh, Clayton and, uh, and, uh, and Tabby. Yeah, very good. Very good. Let me uh, do this one here. Um, George's, George's brother, Bill, passed away. And this is from George Robertson family. Is, is George here? Oh, that's Susan. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, that's his name. Okay, sorry, Susan. I'm sorry. I didn't recognize that. He passed away this week. He, he is saying, you know, praise the Lord for that. Um, George, the man I met. Really? Yeah. I was just putting it together. Sorry. And, uh, yeah, wow. 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 All right. So remember, remember that one there tonight, if you would. Uh, Sydney Hatfield, a 20-year-old, just diagnosed with a brain tumor. Uh, she is saved, so remember that one tonight. I want you to remember, put on our list there, uh, Brother Larry Naylor. A lot of you guys know him. He's in the hospital tonight, so just remember that one tonight. I know that would be good. Um, here's some uh, health needs uh, um, tonight. Uh, let me go here. S uh, salvations. Um, yeah, that's... Uh, I'm, <clears throat> Nicole's cousin, who is an atheist, or if you remember that one tonight, on salvations. I'm going to do a few other salvations, if i got any here. Uh, Randy Wells Sr., is that right? Randy Wells Sr., that's for salvation. Okay. Um, Joshua, I'm sorry, Josiah and John Powell for salvation. If you remember those. And Chris Hurd and Gina Jones. Um, Chris Hurd, special, special needs there. Let's see another for salvation. Richard Evans for salvation. And is that Pam Copenheffer? Yep. And, and Rick O'Brien. Rick O'Brien. And for salvation. Um, this is for uh, Mike and Sandy, for their children and their grandchildren. And continue to pray for uh, their grandson, uh, their, their special needs tonight. Um, I want us to pray for this one. Put this on, on, on our list tonight, that Brother Rogers 
would be able to get uh, his disability approved. I think that would be huge for him if you would help him do that. Um, I'm allowed to read this one, right, Jordan? Where is he? Jordan Rogers. Praying special need, the leading of the Lord for a wife. I like that. A.K.A. marriage. Okay, very good. I'm, I believe that. Hey, one of the most serious things you can pray for your children is the right wife. Amen? You didn't put that in it? You sure they? That's got your name on it, buddy. I'm sorry. <laughs> I asked you before I read it. Uh, all right. Let me see here if I got a few more. I don't want to miss any of these. Uh, pray for uh, Brother Hurd here for heart health, for his health. And uh, special need, is that Marsha Lover? That's who we're praying for, for cancer. And then, uh, is that Gl Gloria? A special health need for Gloria? Okay, I just had trouble reading that one there. Um, here's a health need uh, from Ms. Tanya Segarik. Um, Tanya has an injury to your rotator cup. Is that true, Ms. Tanya? Really? Wow. Throwing baseball, I guess. And for Nicole's wedding coming up. If you remember that one. Okay, let's see if there's any more health needs. All right. Uh, pray for... Um, Claremont Nursing Home, that God would bless there, okay? Uh, Don Brown is housed. Hip replacement, who is that? Yeah, help me out on that one. Dottie, okay. She want, she's had a hip replacement or going to? She had her hip replacement, wow. D -O -T, that's D-O-T, not D-A-T. All right, I think that's all the ones I have here tonight. If I missed one, I, I do apologize. I'll print next time. That'll help me out tremendously, all right? And that'll be a blessing to the Lord. Yes? How many remember, anybody, you all remember Brother Ryan Lang and uh, went out and came, got his life right on track with the Lord here and then went out to West Coast and mar married a missionary girl and they're in Germany? I think they're in Germany and he's probably 25, 26, 27, found out he's got, what kind of cancer is that, Brother Aaron? Leukemia, and so pray for him. Put him on our list, and uh, so uh, that's uh, pretty much the gist of that. There, we want to go to the Lord and ask. Uh, so what I want to do is we're going to do it in two or threes, however you want to do it. You can pray, and this is what I want you to do. Now listen, the service is not over. Okay, we're not dismissing. We're not going anywhere. When you hear the music, <laughs> we're going to be finished praying, and we'll conclude the service. All right. So we're going to pray for a while. And you can pray out loud. I love the voices of prayer throughout the church. Amen. Young people, are you okay to pray together up there? Okay. You guys work together. And kids, can the kids, someone help the kids pray? Would that be wonderful? If we do that, let's all do that for the next few minutes. And get together with somebody and all these needs. Hey, pray for the church. Pray for the missionaries. Pray for the, our country and all the different needs we have. All right? So you may, may do that at this time. You can kneel. You can come to the altar. You can sit right there. Whatever God lays on your heart. And we're going to spend just a few minutes and then we'll conclude our service tonight, all right?
calls me from a world of care and bids me at my Father's throne may call my wants and wishes known in that last stanza with us if you know it tonight. Sweet hour of prayer, sweet hour of prayer, may I thy consolation share, till from out his God's One of my favorite, uh, I know stories I read years ago, Helen, Dr. Helen Rosenberger, I think that's how you pronounce her last name. She had been a missionary for 20 years, in the, years ago in the Congo, and she was about 14 years into that, and she ran an orphanage and a clinic and all that, and they were way out, way out in the bush. I mean, hadn't seen folks, and just way out where you just couldn't get anything. And one day a lady had come, and she was helping her deliver a baby, and it was a tra tragedy because the lady died in childbirth. And she had one little two-year-old girl already, and now this little newborn baby, and it was premature. It was uh, several months early, and so Dr. Rosenberg didn't know really what to do in uh, all the situation. They didn't have an incubator. They're way out there. There's no electricity where they're at. There was no need for an incubator. And they had always used a hot water bottle, and uh, so she had told the midwife, like, listen, go get the hot water bottle. I mean, you have to incubate this baby and uh, keep her warm. And, and the lady went and she said, came back and said, listen, that thing is all wore out. It burst. It's no good. That's the only one we had. We don't have one. And uh, she said, you know what we're going to do? She said, I don't know. We'll have to figure something out. He said, you're going to have to sleep with this baby. It's got to stay warm. And so that midwife stayed up all night, but there's no way you can live like that. I mean, night after night and someone sleep with the baby and could roll over on and all that. And so the next day, the doctor, uh, Helen, she went to the, all the orphanage, all the kids there and, and uh, she said, we're going to have a, we, our normal prayer time. She said, i got to tell you the need. And she told her about the mom that passed away and the, the little two-year-old and this little baby that, that they didn't know what to do. And we just need to ask God. And a little 10-year-old girl in her prayer said something like this. She said, Lord, she said, now, Lord, we, we need a hot water bottle. We need a hot water bottle to keep this baby warm. And it won't do us no good tomorrow. We need it this afternoon or that baby will be dead. And while you're answering that prayer, Lord, send us a doll baby for the two-year-old too. Dr. Helen didn't know what to think of that prayer. She said she had been there 14 years already and they had never in 14 years ever received a package. They were so far out, they have never got anything like that. She said it came noon that day, a little afternoon, and would you know, lo and behold, a package shows up. I've got the book in my office. Tell the story. A package shows up. I hadn't seen one in 14 years. And they begin to take the bows off and take the ribbon off and all that things off the package. And would you know inside that package... There's some Jersey gloves, there's some beef jerky, there's some candy and all that thing. Hot water bottle. Isn't that amazing? Well, there's no coincidence with the Lord, amen. And 
a little doll baby for that little girl. The package was shipped five months earlier from some in the United States. Hey, listen, God answers prayer. I, I know it's hard on a Wednesday night because we're so busy to, you know, you want the spirit of the Lord to touch your heart, but sometimes you just got to pray and you got to, it's work. It, it, it takes an effort, but it's, uh, you begin to get into and, and pray into the Lord. And you know what? God will hear and answer our prayer. We talk Sunday about in his time. Can I finish the reading of this chapter? I got, I got to finish it. Would you let me do that? It's only eight o'clock. We're finished. All right. Look, look at it here. Chapter 20 of 2 Chronicles, and well, it, it's just exciting. I'll just read it. I won't even preach it. How's that? If I can find my glasses, there they are. 2 Chronicles chapter 20. And it says in verse 16, Tomorrow now go ye down against them. Behold, they come up by the cliff, zip, and ye shall find them at the end of the brook before the wilderness of Jeruel. Ye shall not, ye shall not need to fight in this battle. Huh. Set yourself Stand ye still. There's, there are twice as many as them. There's three different countries coming against them. Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord with you. O Judah, Jerusalem, fear not, nor be dismayed. And tomorrow go out against them, for the Lord will be with you. And Je Jehoshaphat bowed his head, look at this, with his face to the ground. And all Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem fell before the Lord, and they worshiped the Lord. What, what do you do when you... What do you do when your prayer gets answered? Now, here, here, here's even better. The prayer wasn't even answered yet. God was just giving them the promise that it was going to. Even before you get the answer to prayer, you ought to thank God. Amen. You ought to worship the Lord. You ought, you ought to fall. That's what we did a minute ago. We kind of fell on our face and we're asking God to help us and come and be with us. It goes on to say, I, I said I wasn't going to preach it, didn't I? Uh, verse 19, and the Levites of the children of the Kohathites and the children of uh, Korhites stood up to praise the Lord God of Israel with a what? Loud. loud voice. Now listen, don't be ashamed to say amen. amen. Don't be ashamed that the preacher says God answers prayer. You say, yeah, I know he does. Hallelujah. He answered my prayer. That's what he's saying. They stood up and they praised God with a loud voice. God, well, I won't go into that sermon either, but God likes that. It says in verse number 20, and they rose up. Now here he goes. I'm finished. And they rose up early in the morning and went forth into the wilderness. And as they went forth, Jehoshaphat stood and said, Hear, men, O Judah, and the inhabitants of Jerusalem. Believe in the Lord your God, so ye shall be established. Believe his prophets, so shall you prosper. Verse 21. And when he had consulted with the people, he appointed singers unto the Lord. Preacher, why do we sing all the time? You always have songs. We like to sing. Singing is a very spiritual thing. They appointed singers unto the Lord and that they should praise the beauty of holiness as they went out before the army and to say, praise the Lord for his mercy endureth forever. Can, you got the picture? Here's the army. The army's coming. They got twice as many as them and here comes the army. But before the army in front are the singers and then behind them are the people praising the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. The singers are singing, praise the Lord. The, 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 fight, the, the army's back there. And they're praising the Lord and they're singing and they're praising the Lord and they're singing. Hey, it'd be good sometimes to praise the Lord. There's nothing wrong with thanking God and praising His name. God loves that. Go on. Look what He says here. It's amazing. And verse 22, And when they began to sing and to praise, the Lord set an ambush against the children of Ammon and Moab and Mount Seir, which were come up against Judah and they were smitten. For the children of Ammon and Moab stood up against the inhabitants of the Mount Seir utterly to slay them and destroy them. And when they had made an end of the inhabitants of the, the Seir, every one helped to destroy another. And so God began to what, cut, cut them down over here, cut them down over here. And then the, the armies of Israel kicked in and they started working. And before long, all three of those countries, they're running for, for the high hills and they defeated the nation. And then look what happened. And when Judah came toward the watchtower in the wilderness, they looked into the multitudes and behold, they were dead. Bodies fallen to the ground and none escaped. And when Jehoshaphat and his people came to take away the spoil of them, they found among them in abundance both riches with the dead bodies, isn't that a little morbid, and precious jewels which they stripped off of for themselves, more than they could carry away. And they were three days in gathering of the spoil and it was so much. I'm done. Hey, 
Listen, first of all, first of all, they fell on their face in fasting and prayer. They set themselves ready to pray. They got, they confessed their sins. They got themselves, they took the broom and cleaned out the cobwebs and all the corners. Hey, listen, sometimes you're going to have to come clean with God. God's not going to hear dirty hands and a filthy heart. And all of us, are, are, we all struggle on that every day. So let's keep a short account. Let's go to the Lord. God, you've got to help me and work on that. Okay, we, we confess our sin. Then we exalt the Lord. Lord, Lord you're, you're the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Look what you did for Dan, da, Daniel. Look what you did for David. Look what, and we tell God how great he is. And then we come and we give him our request and our petitions. And, and we intercede for one another. And we pray for all the needs that we have. And then we thank him for answering our prayer. And then we praise him for answering our prayer. Amen. Amen? Hey, and then he gives us the spoil. Amen. I like that. Isn't that a make, make great chapter? Showing the attitude of prayer, showing the process of prayer. And so we're going to conclude tonight singing and praising the Lord. Let's all stand together. Boy, God's been good to us. Amen. I want High Street Baptist Church to be in prayer. Pray. It's a work. It's duty. It's hard. It's, it's a job to do, but it's, we're praying to God the Father. Amen. And so all of us can do that. We're a child of the King. Don't be afraid to talk to the Heavenly Father. Brother Mike. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. I'm a child of the King. Well, His royal blood now flows in my veins and by you was wretched and poor now can say praise God, praise God. I'm a child of the King. Amen. You know, I was uh, reading uh, something a few months ago, and it was amazing. It, it was a church that it, it started, and Brother Reza, within three months, I, I went to seven, 800 people. I mean, it was just exploding. God was just, people getting saved in their lives, getting baptized. And something happened in the workings of the uh, structure of the city council and all that. They messed up in zoning, and right beside the church, this uh, adult bookstore pornography uh, movie house bought land right next to the church. I mean, the church tried everything they could. They went to those civic leaders. They tried everything. They, they couldn't get rid of them. It was right. I mean, can you imagine going out tonight and right next to you leaving, you have to go buy all that. It was, it was a bad situation. So the church got together and said, well, we don't know what to do. There's nothing to do. Let's pray. And they put a 30-day prayer and fasting together that, they, that God would give them victory in that thing. Fifteen days, Brother Ken, fifteen days into that, lightning struck, burnt the thing down to the ground, to the ground. The bookstore sued the church. <laughs> Brother Perry, they sued the church in court and wanted to pay damages. The church was the defendant. They were the plaintiff. They were the ones suing him. They sued him, Brother Gordon, in church. And the church says, listen, it wasn't our fault. I mean, we, we didn't do anything. It wasn't our fault. And the judge laughed. He said, this is the first time in history he's ever thought, saw this, where the pornographers believe in prayer and the church doesn't. Yeah. Hey, do you really believe in prayer? We, we say we do. Then if you do, then we'd pray more. Amen. Let's be a praying church. Let's go out rejoicing of all God's done to us. And let's thank him for the prayer he's going to answer this week. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Let's sing that as we leave. You can be dismissed as we sing it tonight. Amen. Oh, yes.